Hello everyone, welcome to Callosum BD. Today we are going to discuss about the terminologies of tooth morphology. The word terminology refers to the special group of words to describe tooth morphology easily. In order to understand detailed tooth morphology, at first we need to know the basic structure of tooth. Each tooth has a crown portion and a root portion. The crown portion can be seen easily in the oral cavity, but the root portion is covered and firmly attached to the tooth socket and cannot be seen in the oral cavity. The middle portion of the crown and root portion is the neck portion. Now if we see the cross section of tooth, the crown portion is covered with enamel and the root portion is covered with cementum. The enamel of the crown and the cementum of the root join at the cemento enamel junction. In short, CEJ. This is also known as the cervical line. The bulk of the tooth is formed by dentin, which is below enamel in crown portion and below cementum in root portion. The center of each tooth has a space containing pulp tissue. This space is called as pulp chamber in case of the crown and as pulp cavity in case of the root portion. The pulp tissue in the pulp chamber may extend toward the incisal edge or occlusal surface. This is known as the pulp horn. And the pulp cavity in the root portion is a collection of a few canals. Each of these canals is known as pulp canal. The root portion of the tooth is firmly attached in the bony process of the jaw. This is called the alveolar process. And the bone of the tooth socket to which the tooth is firmly attached is called the alveolus. What are the benefits of this attachment? Well, alveolar process acts as a support to help the tooth in its position in the dental arch. In case of the crown, it is never covered with bone tissue. Rather, it is partly covered with soft tissue of the mouth known as the gingiva, gingival tissue or gums. In short, what are the tissues of tooth? Among the four tissues, the three hard tissues are enamel, dentin, and cementum. And the soft tissue of the tooth is the pulp. Pulp is also the only vascular tissue which furnishes the tooth through its nerves and blood vessels. Now, the different type of tooth in oral cavity are together divided into two groups for their easy description. Among them, the incisors and canine tooth are together called the anterior tooth and the molars and premolars tooth are together called the posterior tooth. Now, what are the different surfaces of tooth? Well, the crown of anterior teeth have four surfaces. They are labial surface, lingual surface, mesial surface and distal surface. But the crown of posterior teeth have five surfaces. They are buccal surface, lingual surface, mesial surface, distal surface and the fifth surface is the occlusal surface. Now the detailed discussion of these surfaces. The surface of the anterior tooth which is facing towards the lip is called the labial surface. This surface in case of posterior tooth is facing towards the cheek which is called the buccal surface. So in case of anterior tooth this is the labial surface and in posterior tooth this is the buccal surface. Both labial and buccal surface together is called the facial surface. 
the surface of both anterior and posterior tooth which is facing towards the tongue is called the lingual surface. This surface is also called the palatal surface in case of maxillary tooth because in maxillary tooth this surface is facing towards the palate instead of the tongue. The surface of the posterior tooth which comes in contact with the same surface of the similar tooth of opposite jaw during occlusion is called the occlusal surface. This surface is not included as a surface in case of anterior tooth. In anterior tooth it is called as incisal edge. If we consider this tooth, this tooth comes in contact with the tooth beside it through two surfaces. These two surfaces are called as proximal surfaces. Among the proximal surface, one is mesial and other is distal. Now which one is the mesial and which one is the distal surface, it depends on the midline. The surface which is nearer to midline is called the mesial surface and the surface which is at a little distance to the midline is called the distal surface. We can also see similarities because midline starts from M and mesial starts from M. So the surface nearer to midline is mesial and the surface at a little distance to midline is called the distal surface. The area of the mesial or distal surface which comes in contact with the mesial or distal surface of the tooth beside it is called the contact area. And these are the contact areas of the tooth. So in case of anterior tooth, this is the labial surface, behind it is the lingual surface, this is the mesial and the opposite of it is the distal surface or vice versa according to midline and this edge is the incisal edge. In case of posterior tooth, this is the buccal surface, behind is the lingual or palatal surface, this side and the opposite side is mesial or distal surface according to midline and this is the occlusal surface. Now in order to understand the various terms of tooth clearly, we need to know the imaginary division of tooth. The surfaces of crown and root are divided into three thirds. Among the three thirds there will always be a middle one which is called the middle third and the other two thirds will be named according to their position. If the division arcs form the incisal edge, then the three thirds will be the incisal third which is near the incisal edge, the middle third which is the middle one and the cervical third which is near the cervical line. The same division in case of posterior tooth starts from the occlusal surface. So the three thirds are the occlusal third near the occlusal surface, the middle third in the middle and the cervical third near the cervical line. Now if we imagine vertical division then in labial and lingual surface the three thirds will be the mesial third, the middle third and the distal third. This mesial and distal third is named according to their location. The third which is near the mesial surface will be the mesial third and the third which is near the distal surface will be the distal third. The same is in case of mesial and distal surface. If vertical division is imagined then the third nearer to labial surface is the labial third. The middle one is the middle third and the third nearer to lingual surface is the lingual third. All this division is in case of anterior tooth. Now what is the division in case of posterior tooth? In case of posterior tooth, in labial and lingual surface, the thirds 
are named similar to the anterior tooth as mesial, middle and distal. But in mesial and distal surfaces, the thirds are the buccal, middle and lingual. The surface which is nearer the third, the third is named according to it. In case of root, the root of anterior and posterior both tooth will be divided into three thirds horizontally starting from the cervical line to the apex of the root. They are named as cervical third near the cervical line, the middle third in the middle and the apical third near the apex of the root. In posterior tooth, the three thirds are same, the cervical third, the middle third and the apical third. This picture of tooth is from the labial aspect and this picture is from the mesial aspect. So, in this tooth, this is the cervical line, this is the incisal edge, this is the mesial surface and this is the distal surface. And in this picture, this is the labial surface and this is the lingual surface. If we consider the horizontal division from the incisal edge, then the thirds will be the cervical third, the middle third and the incisal third. And in vertical division, the thirds will be the mesial third, the middle third and the distal third. And in these pictures, the vertical divisions will be the labial third, the middle third and lastly the lingual third. In case of posterior tooth, this is a picture of buccal view and this is a picture of mesial view. If we consider horizontal division from the occlusal surface, the thirds will be the cervical third, the middle third and lastly the occlusal third. And if we consider the vertical division, then this will be similar as the anterior tooth. This is the mesial, this is the middle and this is the distal third. And in case of this picture, the vertical division will be the buccal third, the middle third and lastly the lingual third. Because the thirds are named according to the surface near to it. Now as we know, the root division is same in case of anterior and posterior tooth. So, the roots are horizontally divided from the cervical line to the apex of the root and these thirds are the cervical third, the middle third and lastly the apical third. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, then like, comment and share. Don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel Kalosambiki.